On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two boats by the lake. But the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep, and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night, and took nothing. But at your word, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both the boats, so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today's Gospel from Luke 5, 1 to 11, this is one of the most famous, lovely, and beloved stories and miracles. It starts as, as such, there was a lot of crowd listening to Jesus' words, and for our Lord to echo his word, the best audiovisual stage is to really stand on a small boat a little farther from the shore so his voice will actually echo into the shore. So please imagine there was two little boats. He asked to be in one of them, and it was Peter's boat. He sat on it and started speaking from the boat to the people on the shore, and they were listening, marveling, happy. However, there was one person he wasn't happy, maybe more. But in this boat, the focused person today is Peter. Peter was unhappy. Although yesterday he healed his mother-in-law, but he was unhappy today sitting on the boat because he caught nothing. He actually labored the whole night, casting the nets, him and, and the other boat, and unfortunately not a single fish decided to throw itself in his nets as if God have sent a major decree asking all fish to avoid the nets of Peter and his associates. So our Lord, once he's done with his word, he told to Simon, he wasn't yet Peter, launch out into the deep, let down your nets for a catch. And there is a problem with that request. The first problem, it's coming from a carpenter to a fisherman. It's coming from a man who is not known to have fish any time in his life to another man who is considered the master of fishing. And the, probably the uh, boss of all fishermen. The second problem that our Lord is asking Peter to go to the deep in the lake of Gennesaret. And that by itself is a problem because as a fisherman, he realized there is no fish in the deep. The fish usually comes in the shallow areas. But there is a third problem. This is not the right time to fish. We are becoming midday now. I try to fish the whole night. I stopped fishing early morning. You took a couple of hours speaking, that's it. It's a bad day, I'm not going back in. The fourth and the last one, I have scrapped this lake, looking for one fish and I didn't find. 
why should I go back in again? What is the difference between what I did and what you want me to do? However, Peter, because our Lord have already shown his love to his family, decided to listen. And Simon said, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Up till now, he could have apologized and said, I'm sorry, Lord, you are a carpenter. It's deep. It's not the right time. And I told, toiled the whole night. But the good thing about Peter, he said, nevertheless, upon your word, I will let down the net. And that's amazing from Peter. I may know better than you in fishing. Maybe my logic is different than your logic, O oh Lord. Your logic I don't understand, but I'm willing to do what you ask of me, even if it doesn't make sense. There is a book by James Dobson called When God Does Not Make Sense. Saint Mary realized that one time. In the wedding of Cana, she realized that her son and Lord may do a miracle out of logic. So she went and told the servants, whatever he tells you, go and do it. And the same happens here. Nevertheless, I will cast my net upon your word. I'm doing something illogic. I'm not agreeing with you, God. My mind is telling me don't do it but you are God, and I'm going to say sure, yes. And when they had done this, done this meaning went to the depth, cast down the net, and in the middle of the day. They had caught a great number of fish that their net was breaking. Completely opposite view of what happened overnight. Overnight, many attempts failed. This time, one attempt in the wrong place, wrong time, but with the right person, succeeded in making their nets break. It's a good problem to have, good problem to have. So they signaled to the partners from the other boat, which was still at shore, and they probably were saying, what kind of foolish Peter is going out in the middle of the day to fish again after we toiled the whole night? They start screaming to them, come and help us. Our nets are breaking from so much fish. And they came and filled both boats, so they even began to sink. A lot of fish filling two boats. When I depended on my logic, I didn't catch one fish. But when I depend on you, O Lord, I am blessed. The word blessing today is not identified or defined. People spend money and say, I'll get blessing, and other people say, what do you mean? You are less that number. I will lose some hours from my work so I can serve God, so I can give me blessing in the rest of that. What do you mean? You are working less. This is what I mean. What I mean is, Cast your net upon his word, even if it's illogic, making less sense to you, and you will be blessed. Work with him, even if your mind and logic sometimes tells you what you're doing. Why? Don't ask why, but say, yes, sure, I will do it, and you will see the blessing. The blessing is an un quantified number of gifts that usually I don't deserve. But it's given based upon the generosity of God and hopefully the faith of the servant. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord, because for he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of the fish which they had taken. Something happened even stranger. When Peter saw all of this, he said, 
I don't deserve the blessing. I don't deserve to be in the same place where this God is. He must be God. He's not just healing my mother-in-law. He ordered the fish that they decided to avoid me, all of them, to throw themselves in my net. He is God, the Pantocrator, who have authority even the little brains of those little fish. At this point, he knelt down and said something I would consider behind his heart, or he didn't mean it. He said, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. The good thing that he said, O Lord, but the not very good thing when he says, depart from me. Of course, he doesn't mean get out of my face. He doesn't mean get out of my boat. He doesn't mean leave me alone. I don't want you in my life. But what he's trying to say, I do not deserve to be in the same boat while you are in it. I am a sinful man and you are the most righteous. You are the righteousness. And at this point, our Lord told them, from now you will catch men. You will be my man. You will be my servant. You will be working for me and I'll take care of everything in your life. This is what's amazing. Peter does not mean leave me alone, but he meant I don't deserve to be working with you. There is a song that's translated as, do not depart from me, O Lord, because I'm a sinful man. Because I'm a sinful man, I need your presence. You are the righteousness. You are the light that purifies and cleanses me. And your presence is everything to me. Finally, the person who tastes the blessing working with God wants to work more. After this, Peter left fishing and decided to be the fisher for men, working all the time, full time for God. As we see from our fathers, the bishops and the priests and all the consecrated men, they saw the blessing of God in their lives and they said, how can I work for the world anymore? I would rather submit myself fully and you take care of all my life. And Peter became the fisherman, the fisher for men, rather than the fisherman. And from now on, he didn't care much about fish. Until, unfortunately, a day or so after Easter, after resurrection. When Peter thought that he's not sure if Jesus resurrected. And our Lord appeared by the shore and Peter at that time decided to go fishing again as if relapsed, going back into his old work. And our Lord told them to fish again in the depth on the right side, caught so many fish, 153. And at that time, John told Peter, he is the Lord. And Peter jumped from the boat, came down, knelt down before God. And at that time, at the end of it, our Lord told him, tend to my sheep. Don't go back to fishing for fish. As if Peter relapsed. And that's why our Lord called him Simon rather than Peter. Because you chose your old job. I give you back your old name. I give you Peter because upon this rock I'll build my faith. If you relapsed, you take your old name. But you want to come back and work with me, I'll give you Peter back. This is a miracle of blessings. This is a miracle of faith. This is a miracle that we need to remember to always tell God, do not depart from my house. Stay because without you, it's deserted. It's an empty boat. I toiled the whole life without one fish, but with your presence, I am blessed. Glory be to God forever, amen.